one was I was with Pound Transport. Um, they had noticed one of my YouTube videos and they um, was like, we noticed that you said you were holding your phone and that's why they fired me. And second company, Trans Am, I had got pulled over by a DOT officer. My phone was up in my window and he seen me touch my, you know, it was like in a stand up in my window. And he seen me touch my, my phone and he pulled me over. what's going on everybody welcome back to the channel uh thank you for listening and we're just gonna go ahead and jump right into it our friend oceana yes uh y'all remember her i had a conversation with her maybe about a year ago or something like that she was the one that made that uh, video uh, while it was raining and unfortunately her company caught wind of it and brought her in and kind of like let her go and he said uh, hey we saw your video. We saw that you was driving with your phone in your hand or some type of recording device in your hand. And uh, we can't have that. So we're going to have to let you go. We had a great conversation with each other. So if you guys would like to listen to that conversation, it will be linked in the description below. Fast forward to now, she's still struggling a bit. Unfortunately, she got let go from her second job i'll let her explain all that good stuff but first she was how can i how can i say it i, I want to say invited because everything went downhill no more wasting time let's get it hold on hey y'all good morning it is currently friday um so i don't know if y'all heard but cfi did not hire me they did not hire me. So basically this is what happened. So, um, you know, like I showed y'all that I got hired. They had set up everything for me. They set up the car for me to go up there to the place. They set up the room. They set up the orientation, all of that stuff. And I spoke to the men and I was like, so I'm hired, am I hired, am I hired? He was like, yes. Um, and I went and took my drug test, took my drug test and my P test. And he called me just yesterday and said, um, they seen your MVR report and they're not happy with it. And I said, uh, what do you mean? And he was like, um, those two violations that you have, they're not happy with it. So we can't hire you. And I was like, oh my God, I almost had a breakdown. I started crying and, and I started crying and I was like, I was like, I just thought I had a job. I've been waiting so long for a job and you know, and you know something, I feel like I should have explained to him like my situation before because I wouldn't have had to took that drug test or anything. Like I wouldn't have to got my hair cut that time. I should have just explained my situation and see if they could take me because going through this, getting bad news after feeling like you was gonna get ready to leave is like something y'all. Well, here's the thing like when companies or recruiters when they reach out to you and they talk to you they'll take you through the process of everything there it's like a pre type deal right they getting you ready they sending you to places they getting stuff set up while at the same time when they put in requests for like motor vehicle reports DAC reports psp reports and all other kind of reports those reports kind of take a little bit of time and i do agree that yeah let's just wait until you get all of the reports in until you come down and make me an offer but they give you a tentative offer while all the reports is still being processed so being that the offer is tentative you can still come in you can still take the drug test you can still go through the orientation uh, you can still get ready for training and everything but until the reports come in and the people that eyeballs that gets on those reports that could give you the final say on whether or not that you're in with the company those are the people that gonna be like yeah 
sorry, we can't use you. So I understand and I feel the way she feels like, yeah, I wish you would have just told me that in the beginning and we wouldn't have to waste all that time. But on the flip side of things, I understand you guys going to be like, well, maybe she should have told him. And I agree. I agree to an extent, right? Because some companies you'll be like, well, maybe they could just look for it themselves. But it's the same thing as though of you not telling. You fill out an application and you don't put everything on the application per se. And then when the company finds out later, and then they can go back to that application where they ask you a specific question and you didn't answer it, then that gives them pause to let you go. But here's the actual reason. Hey y'all, good morning. It is currently Saturday. Um, so I wanted to just go over um, some things. Um, I am based out of Texas. Um, and also I have one year OTR experience, honestly not understanding why it's not showing on my um, like reports and stuff. But I was with, the first company I was with was Pam Transport. I was with them five months. And then I was with Trans Am for seven months. So that toes out to, you know, a year. So yeah, um, but that's some things about me. Um, I've already explained my violations. One was I was with Pound Transport. Um, they had noticed one of my YouTube videos and they um, was like, we noticed that you said you were holding your phone and that's why they fired me. And second company, Trans Am, I had got pulled over by a DOT officer. My phone was up in my window and he seen me touch my, you know, like in a stand up in my window. And he seen me touch my, my phone and he pulled me over but he didn't give me a ticket or anything he just said um get it to your company and i need to get it back to us so i'm guessing that's what goes on your background or whatever your license so um yeah that's my situation it's unfortunate uh, that happened to her you guys could check out the conversation on the on the first incident but she pretty much learned from it like she didn't have the recording device in her hand or anything like that the second incident was just i don't know i i, I want to say it was a fluke you know what i'm saying the, the dot officer must have been side riding her on the on, on the side because the only way you can see if a truck driver messing with any of the devices that's on the, the windshield or anything like that you have to at least be side riding looking up at the driver to see to see what the driver is doing but that's what i think that that's why i don't know call call me superstitious but yeah when i when i be driving and i happen to notice a car or a truck or a suv or 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 a semi side riding me for a period of time yeah, I'm, I'm going to keep my eyeball on you. Like, bro, who are you? you know what I'm saying? Who are you? So, unfortunately, the officer pulled her over. Unfortunately, it was on her on her inspection report. And I, I, I don't believe the officer gave her a ticket or anything like that. But I think that would have been the perfect cause to ask for a ticket. Because I think she probably could have fought that because if she didn't have the camera in her hand or anything like that yeah so another advice that i got for you new drivers out here and, and drivers in general if you don't have your devices other than the gps and the map posted in the windshield try, try to go to the truck stop get one of those cup mounts and put it right there put it right there man because a lot of these unmarked vehicles that be side riding you they could come up to the side of the truck especially at night they could see the reflection of the uh, the video that you might be watching or the reflection of somebody talking or even if you live streaming yeah that that gives them pause right there to pull you over to either do an inspection in the last sound piece that you're going to hear let the companies know straight up Hey y'all, good morning. Um, it's currently Sunday. We're supposed to start with our new job on the 27th. That will be my orientation day. I don't want to count my blessings before they're here because I feel like, I don't know, you know, it's like, it's like just something, it's like, I don't know, something hinders all of that with just counting your blessings before they already came. You know what I mean? Like counting your money before you got it type stuff. So, 
That's why I don't want to count this job before I'm in the dough, really. They told me I got the job, you know what I mean? As long as I passed that drug test and um, hair test. And I already know I passed that, but it's like, I swear, all of the companies have been, you know, telling me no and telling me they can hire me, you know, and stuff like that. But the thing about it is like, man, you go through so much with these companies and honestly, they don't even do their job beforehand. You know what I mean? Like checking all that stuff beforehand, like check that stuff. You know what I mean? And I could have, you know, told them my background before, but I thought they were supposed to be the company and check that. You know what I mean? Like, why not check that? That's what y'all are really looking for anyway. So, yeah, I'm just, I'm not going to count them. I'm not going to, I'm going to keep on applying, you know, because I can't just sit around and wait for that one. Just in case I don't waited a whole nother month for a job. You know what I mean? Like, just in case I have to be, I have to be on my toes every time because it's like, I've been waiting over a month for a job, y'all, and it's crazy. After thinking I had a job and now, okay, another job supposedly, but we're going to keep, you know, applying because I feel like that's the best thing to do. Hopefully next time she will or get with a company or something like that. And maybe she'll just kind of like let them know in the, in the beginning. I agree with what she said that, yeah, it's the company's responsibility to look all that up. But listen, if you leave it up to the company to look all that up, it's going to take a minute. And once they find out, then they're going to come back to you. You probably might be driving. You probably might be making your money with them. But they can just easily route you back into the terminal and be like, yo, we got to let you go because of your records. Just like they did. They didn't get as far as they got with her. But when they found out about her driving record, that's when they let them go. And I agree with you. I agree with you. It's their job to look it up. But it's also your responsibility, too, to kind of like let them know depending on the situation they're going to find out anyway maybe not right away but companies like mega carriers like cfi and the rest of them if you tell them right off the rip that you got let go for a safety issue then yeah right then and there that they can't bring you in or they'll probably let how long it'll be before they can let you in so I know it's discouraging. You're looking for a job. You're going through all these companies. They all giving you the same answer. And it's depressing to the point that like, why did I spend all that time to get my CDL if I'm going to go through all this time trying to get a job? I know I did wrong, but can I at least get a get, get a second chance? Well, actually, this would be a third chance, but, but yeah, yeah, I learned my lesson. But listen, one of your commenters says, They've been following you for a minute and they said that they think you should move in silence. Once you get the job, then make the announcement. Now, a lot of these jobs too, listen, a lot of these companies, especially trucking companies now, they look at social media. They really do. But companies, they resilient, man. They can they can find your social media. A lot of people came out on TikTok saying, yo, I got this grand job only to find out that somebody at that job saw that TikTok or saw that video and rescinded the offer. So sometimes making an announcement before everything is solid is, is kind of hindrance. So, but more power to you all. I'm rooting for you. I hope everything work out. I hope this company that you applied for give you the opportunity that you so deserve. Uh, in too deep like Omar. Make me want to track you down and hit the track hawk with the crowbar. I knew we wouldn't go far, like we ran out of ethanol. Now your nosy ass mama want to get involved. When I met you, you was on the couch with the plastic. She need an Emmy. Bitch so dramatic. Now your baggage got me on edge like jagged. Fucking up my homes, look Patrick. You swift to jump shift like a chief. Been crying on my line like Therese. But it ain't all you, it's me. Blaming on the things I went through.